Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, somebody was asking me the other day, Bob, where do you get all of these great ideas for your YouTube videos? So today I thought I'd share the creative juices that come out and become what is known as Bob the Science Guy. You know, people sometimes ask me why I go on the talk shows like Jose J.G. Gonzalez and interact with flirts. Isn't it a waste of time? No. It's comedic gold, and it's a great source of ideas. And today's idea came from an interaction I had on Jose J.G. Gonzalez. And that was one of the Flat Earthers was talking about the Antarctic Treaty. And it became apparent within a matter of seconds that this particular flat earther had never even bothered to read the Antarctic Treaty. Now, the second half of the inspiration came from an excellent video I looked at this morning from Hith. Hith was reviewing a video by our favorite example of argument from personal incredulity and Dunning-Kruger, also known as Jaronism. And Jaronism was saying that theoretical physics was not even real science, it was pseudoscience, and he did a whole video on that. And then Hith had a look at it, and I really enjoyed the video. But there was a section of that video that I found to be particularly interesting. Let me play it for you. It reminds me of a quote from Nikola Tesla, who of course was a real scientist, not a theoretical physicist, who said, The scientists from Franklin to Morse were clear thinkers and did not produce erroneous theories. The scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation, and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Nikola Tesla. Now, in case you didn't notice, that is a very commonly used quote from Nikola Tesla. But the thing that was cool about this one is it finally put the source of the quote in that graphic. It turns out that quote came from an article in Modern Mechanics and Inventions, from July of 1934, and you get down here on page 40, there's the article, the original article, the primary source. And I got to thinking about that. I wonder if they've ever even bothered reading this. So I decided to read it myself. And when I got done, I could sum it up in two words. Oh, my. So let's cue up the music and get started and show how a new series comes to light. So join me in the inaugural episode of Flurs Gone Wild. Nikola Tesla, the darling of the flat earth, he is their favorite scientist and they quote him on a regular basis. Now, this article came about as a result of an interview with a journalist when Tesla was 78. He had returned from Colorado Springs, where he had been working on his Tesla tower to put free energy out through the atmosphere and electrify the world without wires. This is his vision of what the future is going to look like. And he talks about a couple of things here. And I found that it was extremely interesting that the Flat Earthers picked this article to cherry pick a quote from Tesla about. So let's go over a couple of the things that Tesla was talking about in this article, and you can make up your own mind as to whether or not this helps the flat earth case or harms it. Now in the first quote directly attributed to Tesla on the front page of this article on page 40, he talks about rocket powered machines obtaining the speed of one mile a second or 3,600 miles per hour through the rarefied medium above the stratosphere. Now, the rarefied medium above the stratosphere, what do you think he's talking about here? He knows that the stratosphere is very, very thin atmosphere. What's above that? Space, perhaps? And what do you travel in this rarefied medium with? Rockets. So, this is the first flat earth myth that falls by the wayside from this article that they love quoting. Rockets do work in a vacuum. They do work if there's no air to push against. As a matter of fact, 
Tesla specifically chose rockets because it would be the only form of propulsion in that type of a medium. Oh boy, we've got a couple of problems here. First of all, in this illustration, Mars is shown to be a planet. Looks like one with an atmosphere. And he talks about using short wave radio frequencies to be able to communicate between planets. And by the way, do you see how the Earth not only is a globe, it has an atmosphere, and the planets are viewed not as luminaries or lights in the sky, but actual physical objects in space? Again, does this help the flat Earth cause or hurt it? Therefore, it should not be hard to establish intelligent exchange of ideas between two planets. The Earth that we inhabit might be the beneficiary. It's conceivable that there are civilizations on other planets far ahead of ours. He feels that radio communications could reach other planets, and if there are advanced civilizations on those planets, it would facilitate the exchange of ideas between us. That hardly sounds like he's viewing these other planets as lights or holograms or anything other than what they are, and that is rocky balls in space, much like our Earth. ruh -roh. What do we have here in the Tesla article? We have a spherical globe, and he calls it a globe, which is a sphere. It's not a flat plane. It's a globe. But more importantly, it is a globe that rotates. Tesla knew not only that the Earth was a globe, he knew that the Earth rotated. He even talks about the idea of launching a satellite or, or a rocket ship into space and taking advantage of the rotation of the Earth to whiz it around in orbit. Now, does this help your cause, Flat Earth? Or is this Tesla, your favorite scientist, telling you your idea is bollocks? Let's look at the bottom of this page. There's the Tesla quote that Jaronism just put out. Now, here's why I have a problem with Flat Earth, because in order to get that quote, they had to be on this page of the magazine. What's on the same page of the magazine? A spherical rotating Earth, and Tesla's talking about putting rocket ships in orbit around it. This is intellectual dishonesty. You guys are caught. This is cherry picking at its best. You can't take a quote down here and ignore the fact the Earth is a rotating sphere at the top of the same page, page 42. Do you think that people weren't going to catch this? Now, by the way, just in case the Flat Earth thinks that Tesla is infallible and his word is to be taken for everything, unless, of course, it says something about a spherical globe Earth which rotates and has rocket ships going around it. Have a look at this right here. He didn't believe in atomic energy. He didn't think that it would ever come to anything. As we all know, we have nuclear power now. We have nuclear weapons now. He didn't believe in either of them. He didn't believe in some atomic particles such as electrons, and he was an electrical engineer. As to atomic energy, my experimental observations have shown that the process of disintegration is not accompanied by a liberation of such energies as might be expected from the present theories. So he did experiment with nuclear power, according to this. It didn't liberate energy as Einstein had predicted. Turns out he was wrong. Simply because you do an experiment doesn't mean that you're right. He just didn't do the experiment correctly. Now here's another interesting misconception that Tesla had. He seems to believe that cosmic rays come from space. And he says that it gives radioactivity to objects on the Earth. So, for example, if radium could be screened effectively against these cosmic rays, it would cease to be radioactive. Radium is intrinsically radioactive. The radioactivity comes from within the radium. It's not placed there externally by cosmic rays. 
So he doesn't seem to have a very good understanding of what radioactivity truly is, just as he didn't think that there was any energy to be liberated in splitting the atom, which, of course, he checked himself experimentally. And then again, of course, we have our quote again. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, blah, 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 blah. Of course, in this case, Einstein's mathematics were correct and Tesla's experiments were wrong. But we digress. Now, this is an interesting part of the article. He talks about using rocket-propelled machines above the stratosphere to deliver weapons of war. Now, while he's talking about conventional explosives and poison gas here, rather than nuclear weapons, he is discussing a rocket-based delivery system of weapons of war. Very advanced thinking. And of course, we have ICBMs now. Now, by the way, going back to Jaronism's original video that talked about theoretical physicists practicing pseudoscience because they didn't do experiments, let's see what Tesla has to say specifically about that. The scientific man does not aim at an immediate result. He does not expect that his advanced ideas will be readily taken up. His work is like that of a planner for the future. His duty is to lay the foundation for those who are to come and point the way. He lives and labors and hopes. A better definition of what theoretical sciences are, I've never heard. The job of the theoretical physicist is to come up with a premise, with a hypothesis as to how things in the natural world work, much as Einstein came up with his theory of general relativity. It wasn't until Eddington in 1919 demonstrated gravity bending of light following the mathematical predictions of Einstein, and then LIGO detecting gravitational waves, and then recently being able to image a black hole for the first time. These are things that all came along after Einstein had theorized their existence. Experimental evidence later on found that they did indeed exist, as Einstein predicted. That, my friends, is the job of a theoretical physicist. And Jaron, had you actually read the article that you cherry-picked this quote out of, you would have seen that. Guys, thank you very much for stopping by. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Hey, make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. I'd really love to have you on Team Bob. I'd like to get up to 20,000 subscribers in the next month or two, and you can help me out with that. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the button. Hey, before you go, stop by and check out his channel, and maybe go over to Jose J.G. Gonzalez. Boom! And maybe hop into the chat. There's some really nice people there that you can have a nice conversation with. And me. This is Bob the Science Guy. See you again soon. And oh, by the way, hit that little like and subscribe. Do it now.